Hello and welcome to the channel. Oh, fuck's sake. Hello and welcome to the channel and another video. Uh, today's video is a little bit different due to the weather being as it has for the last, what, six weeks. It's been very difficult to get out and do any new filming every time I try and attempt to leave the house. It's just, I mean, it's not great to be on the bike in the first place. It's cold, it's wet, it's dangerous at times with ice. But it's no good for filming. It's just, it doesn't make a pretty picture. So I've had to give over with the filming for a little while. So we will get out when the weather's better. But as I can see, you're enjoying the videos, which is really good. Um, this just encouraged me to do more videos, which like I say, I would do, but for the weather. What I want to do with this video is I want to explain a couple of things, which if you've been watching the videos, the things that I could have done better. Number one, the audio quality in the helmet. That was terrible. I really struggle with it right from the first video. I've tried to adjust it. I've moved the microphone around in the helmet. It doesn't seem to, it didn't seem to matter where I put it. The wind noise, especially above say 30, 40 miles an hour, was so bad, you couldn't tell a word I was saying, which is why you, you hear on my videos a lot of voiceovers because I'm having to fill in during editing what I wanted to say in the helmet, basically, which isn't ideal. I got around it kind of. But in any way, I bought this now, got a new helmet and I'm happy to say that I've been out, I've tested it with the microphone in it, and at last we've got a solution to the speaking while I'm riding the bike. Should be nice and clear now. It's changed so much, I don't have to back as often as I should really, but every time I do I'm amazed how much it's changed. When I got there it was shut, so I tried to do a U-turn in road, and halfway around the U-turn I slipped into neutral. Uh, the other thing is going forward, all videos will be 4K and the reason for that is I've I recorded the North Coast 500 in 1080 HD and I did think that would be plenty of quality and when I'd edited it and before I uploaded it to YouTube I checked it and it was superb but I don't know what happens at the YouTube end of things but once it gets on the YouTube server and I watch it on YouTube the video quality is not, it's not great I mean when I'm stood walking around, it's not too bad, but when the bike's moving at say 50 miles an hour, everything's just a blur, and it it did spoil the viewing for me. I don't know if it did for any of you, but for me, knowing that it should be better than that, it, it really really felt like it let me down. So 4K going forward. Also, other camera angles has been, I know other YouTubers, they show videos from the behind the bike, the side of the bike, on the floor. And, so we've I've got around that as well, I've bought, the latest 360 camera, the Insta360 X3. So I'll be using that, you'll be seeing that in up and coming videos. You'll probably see some strange angles with the invisible selfie stick that people have. So that'll be a new feature. And we've got this now as well. So when we get to decent locations, I'll be able to get some 4K video footage and photographs. We're using this drone. This is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. So I have to bear with me while I learn to fly the thing. <laughs> Uh, that's something that I've had a few goes already and yeah, it looks easier than it actually is, let's just say that. Mount wise on the chins of the camera has been an absolute nightmare. I've tried the GoPro sticker during the North Coast 500. At the end of that trip, I was meant to film the last, very last part of the North Coast 500 and my trip home because I'd planned the things to stop off at on the way home. But the mount snapped for the second time. Do you remember when I dropped the bike? Well, when I dropped the bike, the GoPro, it was powered up on the USB into the dash on the bike. So as the bike dropped, it yanked and it brought the mount on the helmet. I had one spur. I put the spur on during a, a session when we were racing towards the campsite. The that night we were late at seven o'clock at campsite, going down an air road at 60, 70 mile an hour and turning my head, you know, turning your head to do your, your checks and that. The side wind on the camera was such force it brought the second mount and I didn't have another mount. I thought going forward that ain't the way for me. Keep breaking these plastic mounts, it's rubbish. So I bought one of these. Now at first I thought this was a solution. This was a, you know, it's very flexible, you can't break it. I don't know if you've seen these before, but they go on the front of the camera, that's the front of the camera, on front of the helmet. Straps go through the inside. Now the downside to that is, you have to have. You... <laughs> Your visor open, and once the straps are inside, it your visor don't quite you know get the sweet spot and lock proper. So there's always a draft, and that creates wind noise. So that wasn't ideal. But even worse than that, because this is 
that kind of helmet and the button is right there in the middle the straps on this was causing the button to press in all the time so it never locked down so we've done away with that now um, I've come up with a different idea I've seen these online and I didn't buy one simply because they're expensive and that's this I don't know if you can see it proper it's the Django clamp mount now I've got to say I've been out and tested this while I was testing the sound on the mic and it's superb I have to say it is brilliant you just get the camera put the camera in this case here because it's got the mod on it for holding the microphone stick that on clip it on the helmet drive off absolutely brilliant so easy so going forward things are looking up so we've got better sound better video quality better way of mounting the cameras the microphone the lapel mic i had which was a, a, a boyer m8 i think it is boyer m something uh, which is a great mic no problem with it but it comes with 10 meters of wire on it when you're trying to hide it in your helmet that's a lot so i ended up having to roll it up into a inside pocket on the jacket but it meant i had the jack plug in the gopro and the microphone in the helmet so i had two wires tethering to my jacket and it was snagging up all the time so that's not ideal so this setup now i've got here as you can see the fluffy mic here that's the mic for the camera and it just comes right at the bottom here and goes straight in the camera so helmet on and off no wires to snag it's just little things i realize that um trips going forward then um, we've got a European trip planned uh, going through I think six countries um, you'll have to wait for that because I think it's end of July but that should be good two and a half thousand miles so we're still picking out things at the moment for the exact route we've not quite wired up but it's going through France Belgium Germany Austria Czech Republic back into Germany and possibly Holland on the way back depending on where we are for time between now and then there'll be a lot of historical things like castles uh, stone circles this sort of thing that we'll be riding out to uh, so yeah stick with us the channel's getting busy getting few people on there and I'd just like to say if you have commented you have subscribed any way of interaction with the channel I'm really grateful and thank you very much it just encouraged me like I said before to to get out there and do some more videos for you so thank you very much that's all it is for this uh, little video thank you very much thanks for watching if you haven't done so already I would really appreciate it if you subscribed Click the bell and give me a big thumbs up. That way we'll promote the videos and get more people to the channel. That would be brilliant. I will see you in the next video, coming soon.